Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Let's see. All right, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Fomika, and I am the Community Connections Coordinator here at CDCC. Uh, once again, thank you so much for taking time to have your busy schedule this evening and joining us for this information session. Um, throughout the evening, you'll learn about different departments of our, of our campus, um, including financial aid, admissions, our student life and our onboarding process along with our College of Arts and Sciences. Um, so we look forward to talking to you guys and learning more about you all as well. Also, we want this to be an interactive conversation. So if you have questions as we're talking, please post them in the chat and we will answer them as we're moving throughout the, the afternoon. Um, also throughout the evening, we will have a few polls that we would have greatly appreciate it if you all would answer. All right. So I'm going to take a few minutes and introduce the panel that we have. Um, this evening we have Marlena uh, Hankton from admissions and she'll be talking to you guys about the admissions process. Uh, we also have Ryan McNamara from financial aid. We have Dr. Cindy Wallen from our Department of Art and Science credentials. We have Raylene Cope. And Raylene is going to talk to you guys about onboarding, actually coming to CDCC and the academic programs. And we have Michael Ferris, Dean Michael Ferris here also, and he'll be talking to you guys about our student development and student activities. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, first, I'm going to put a poll in here, if you guys could please answer. All right. All right. I see. I think everyone's answered. Thanks again. And I'm going to share results just to show you guys a little bit about what some of you guys are here for tonight. So we hope we answer all your questions. Um, as I said before, if you have a question, as we're talking, please just put it in a chat and we will be sure to answer it before the, the session is over. All right, so we are going to move right along. And first, we have Marlena Hankton from Admissions, and she's going to talk to you guys about the actual admission process. Marlena? Hi, I'm so glad that we have a couple of students on here. I feel excited about the admission process because it does get confusing, and I want to make sure that I highlight the important aspects of it. So the first thing that you're going to do when you become interested in coming back to school, you're going to go to our webpage. It's Central. Virginia.edu. And you have to remember that Central Virginia is all spelled out in all one word, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look over that. You'll see a start here icon. You can click on that. It is a clickable icon and it will take you to another page. It will have a nice long paragraph on there. Please read that paragraph. And at the bottom of that paragraph, there is a link to the application process. It is an electronic application process and you will start that, okay? Now, just FYI, if you had attended the college and it had, um, and it had been less than a year, you will still be active and there's no need to do the application. However, if you thought, oh, I'm gonna come to the school and you did not, and it's been more than three years, please do this application step process that I'm telling you now, okay? So once you finish the application process, it's gonna send you a congratulations letter about being accepted to CVCC. Make sure as you're filling out this application that you write down your student ID number. It's your Impl ID number. This number will follow you for the rest of your life, no matter what school you go to in the state of Virginia. It is important to write that number down if you do not remember it, it's okay. Give us a call. We'll look you up by your social security number and we will give you that information. I want you to make sure that 
as you're filling out the application, you look for codes within the application, such as being in state and out of state. Those things make a big difference when it comes to paying for your classes. So we wanna make sure that you get what you are all that you are entitled to. You also, if you've never been to our school, if you're thinking about coming, you need to send in your transcript. Your transcripts will come from your high school, or if you attended another college and you're coming over here just to take a class for the summer or take one class or two classes or whatever, I need you to make sure you send in your college transcript so they can be evaluated. You will not get to choose the classes that you want to be enrolled in unless you submit your transcript. I noticed that a lot of students want to how to enroll in classes. Please submit your transcript. And then we can evaluate your test scores, your ACT scores, send all of that stuff in. Um, you'll be able to establish a password for your MyCVCC. So you'll be able to get into the system, log in, communicate with your teachers, Canvas and all of us. Um, and let me see, what else? We do accept transfer credit. So the transcript that you will send in, 25% of it has to be CVCC. So just remember that when you're submitting your transcript from a college outside of us, that 25% of it does need to be CVCC in order to, for you to graduate from us. So with that being said, I think I said a whole lot you have questions put it in the chat and with that I want to also let you know put your social security number into the application that allows us to find you and it also allows you to get FAFSA and Ryan McNamara is going to talk about FAFSA and financial aid with you next so with that I'm passing the buck to you and I'll be listening looking out for chat questions all right, thank you, Marlena. Hey, that's a good segue, the social security number. I like that. Um, hey, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us this evening. My name is Ryan. I am in the financial aid office at CVCC and I'm gonna be sharing my screen with you. We're gonna be going through a quick PowerPoint presentation and that way, um, hopefully you can take notes. If you have any questions, you can feel free to send those in the chat or we can talk a, bit, a little about it after this presentation or um, at the end of this whole session. But welcome and congratulations. So uh, congratulations to those of you that have just graduated from high school um, and you're ready to take that next step. And also congratulations to those of you that may have been out of high school for a while and deciding to get back into the educational realm and um, come into CVCC. So welcome to all of you. Uh, let's see. So two things we're going to talk about, and Marlena touched on the first thing, which is how to apply for admission to the college. So now we're going to talk about how to apply for financial aid. And you'll see on that bullet point number two, you want to use the FAFSA. So you want to submit your FAFSA. FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. That's what the term, it determines your financial need, which then determines what aid, grants, scholarships, and things like that that you're eligible for. So that's what we're going to touch on in a little bit. How much does CVCC cost? So you'll see on that screen, there are two different prices. One is in-state tuition and one out-of-state. Marlena had mentioned on the admission application that it's important that you read the questions and answer them correctly. And one of the reasons is because um, on the admission application will determine if you are in-state or out-of-state. So obviously the in-state tuition rate is a lot less than out of state. So you wanna make sure that you follow the instructions and read it correctly. Um, but to give you an idea of the cost, so if you're an in-state Virginia resident, your charges are $161 per credit hour. Full-time enrollment is 12 credit hours. So 161 times 12, that's what your tuition and fees would be for a full-time student taking 12 credit hours for one semester. So it comes to about $1,900 a semester. So that's the not great news, but now we're gonna to touch on the great news that will help you with that. And again, that is completing the FAFSA. The FAFSA is fafsa.gov, that's the website. You wanna make sure you go to the .gov website because that you can submit the FAFSA for free. If you go to fafsa.com, fafsa.org, those different websites, you can still submit the FAFSA, but they're gonna charge you for the same thing that you can do on your own. You're gonna make sure if you're 
enrolling for this upcoming fall semester beginning in August, that you submit the 2021-22 FAFSA. So that's the year that you're going to want to submit. One thing to keep in mind, if you're under the age of 24, more than likely you're going to need parent information on the FAFSA as well. So make sure that there's a parent nearby because they're going to create a username and password the same as you, the student. The last thing I want to say on this slide is when you submit your FAFSA, you're going to receive notification from our office that we've received your FAFSA. We're also then going to encourage you to go to what's called your to-do list to see if there's any other documents that we need from you before we can award your financial aid. So don't think just that you submitted the FAFSA that you're done. There may be additional documentation that we need. So just keep an eye out for that. And again, we'll notify you uh, if that's the case. So what aid may you be eligible for? So there's federal grants. The Pell Grant, again, this is based on the FAFSA. You may be eligible for up to $6,400 for the year in the Pell Grant. Now, remember earlier I said full-time Virginia resident student, your tuition is about $1,900 a semester. Well, the Pell Grant, half of $6,400, um, $3,200, for the semester, that's going to cover your 1900 in tuition. So if you're eligible for the full Pell Grant amount, it's going to cover your tuition and fees plus extra that you may need for other things. In addition to that, if you're a, a Virginia resident, there are state grants as well. So there's a Commonwealth grant that you can receive up to $2,000 a year. The one thing I want to point out is that PTAP, it's a part-time in-state tuition grant. And that's um, eligible for students that are enrolled one to eight credit hours. So you do not have to be full time. You can even just take one credit hour and be eligible for some type of financial assistance. So don't think you have to be full time. If all you can handle for one semester is maybe one or two classes, do those one or two classes because there's still aid available for you. We also offer a tuition payment plan. So if your aid does not cover all of your tuition, um, you can do the payment plan, which then breaks that bill or that, you know, the, the amount that you owe into multiple payments. So instead of having to pay the full amount at once, you can spread it out over multiple months. So one question we get often is, can you use financial aid to purchase books and maybe even a laptop? And the answer is yes. So if your financial aid is greater than your actual tuition, that extra money is yours and you can use that in the bookstore to purchase books, laptop, you know, things, supplies, things that you need um, for school. So that's an added benefit. You don't have to come up with anything out of pocket. You can just use your financial aid that's already available to you. Um, one other thing, obviously things have changed. And I say that because when you submit your FAFSA, it's looking at 2019 income information. And we know a lot of things have changed since then. So it's looking at 2019 income information. If somebody has maybe lost a job or reduced hours in a job or high medical bills, things like that, there's a possibility that we in the financial aid office can make an adjustment to your FAFSA. So that's looking more real time now, not 2019. So if things have changed for you since 2019, I'd encourage you to reach out to our financial aid office and I'll give you our contact information in a little bit but let us know what your situation is and we can kind of walk through it to see what we can do to help you. And the last thing I wanna mention is there's a new Virginia tuition free, it's called a G3 program. So um, the link is at the bottom there. It's also on our financial aid page. So there's a possibility that your tuition will be free. It'll be covered. Now there are some stipulations. You have to be in certain programs of study um, and there's an income criteria that you have to meet. But if you're eligible for that, there, this is a, you don't have to worry because your tuition is covered plus extra for books. Um, plus there is also another incentive grant that you may be eligible for. Again, if you have any questions specifically on this, reach out to the financial aid office and we'd be glad to help you um, or to your admission count or your academic counselor and they could answer some of the questions for you. Um, but here's our contact information. If you'd like to email us, financialaid at centralvirginia.edu, or feel free to give us a call. But we're here to help you. So we want to make sure that whatever you need, you get. So that's that. Uh, does anyone have any specific financial aid related questions? Going once. 
going twice. All right. So I'm going to pass you back to Filmica. I think we have a poll. Poll number two, Filmica. That is correct. Thank you so much, Marlena and Ryan. Um, and we do, we have another poll. All right, and if you could, please take a minute to answer the question, please. All right, great. Thank you, everyone. So this question, of course, asks about computer laptop needs as well as reliable internet. Um, here at CBCC, we currently have a laptop loaner program for our students. Um, and with that, it's more information on our website. But however, if you are enrolled in six credits, um, you have the opportunity to um, borrow one of our laptops for us to uh, so you can be successful in your classes during the semester. And we also have um, mobile hotspots as well. And those are available as well for you to check out to borrow. Uh, so we have, next we have Dr. Cindy Wallet. She's gonna talk to you guys a little bit more about the arts and science department. Also guys, please keep in mind, if you have any questions at all, feel free uh, to put them in a chat. So, all right. Thank you, Dr. Wallet. Good evening, everyone. I am delighted that you are here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, what I would like to do with uh, you this evening is to share some of the programs that fall under the Division of Arts and Sciences. And we have um, three or four different categories. And so what I'd like to do is to take you to our homepage. And on that homepage, you'll notice many of the things that Marlena and Ryan referred to. Uh, the apply now, the start here, all of those buttons that uh, are on that homepage that can lead you to uh, pathways that will help you get where you want to go. But I would like to share with you in particular the programs and classes page, uh, and that's going to give you the information that hopefully you are looking for. I noticed that during the poll, several of you noted that you were interested in what programs of study that we have. And what we have on this page here that is program of classes, you'll notice that there are eight different boxes there and our programs are sort of divided up into eight major categories. And depending upon your interest, this would be a good page for you to explore and find out in more detail, much more than I can give you this evening, uh, a lot of detail about the programs that we have. So you'll notice we have business, education, health sciences, humanities, and arts and communication, industry and manufacturing, uh, public safety, science, technology, engineering, and math, and the ones that are in and that will relate to um, what what takes place on my side of the world. And so I, I will I will share with you that most of the programs that I'm going to talk about tonight are in the transfer category. They are programs that uh, the intent is that you eventually would transfer to a four-year school after you complete the two-year degree here. And I'll begin with uh, the first one here under humanities and arts and education. And you'll notice there are two here. Uh, the more popular, and this is where most of our students uh, end up at, is the general studies degree. The general studies degree is really for those people who very clearly want to transfer to a four-year degree. And you may or may not know a lot of people at this point, you know, sometimes when they start at the community college, they really don't know where they want to go and that's okay. Um, we'll help you find that pathway. But the general studies program uh, is basically a 61 credit program uh, that most of those cl cl classes will transfer directly to your college. And you'll notice here the general studies, obviously a two-year transfer degree. It's intended for those who hope to uh, matriculate to a four-year school to major in whatever, psychology, science, math, whatever the case may be. But you'll notice down towards the bottom of the page that there's a general studies 
and the AANS, that's the Associate of Arts and Sciences. And this is sort of the general pathway that I'll point out. And you'll notice here when you click on it, here are the list of classes that are in that general program. And you'll see the 61 credits. So these are the courses that you would take. If you click on any one of these classes, they are hyperlinked to a course description of that course. So that can help you to know what in particular you will be studying in that course. So this pathway is intended to be somewhat linear. So in other words, you would take course one, then course two, course three, and so forth down that pathway. Um, I will just point out quickly, when you look at these programs and classes, one of the cool things, um, let me look at another one here, the science, technology, and engineering and math. Um, you'll notice that there are a couple of different ones here, but I'm gonna look at the science. Uh, we have three distinct pathways that you can choose for the sciences. Um, but as I do that, I'll, I'll point out that one of the cool features that we uh, provide for our students is the MZ information here that helps you to sort of highlight some careers that you potentially could go into and the money that you could ultimately make. Because I know all of you, you know, at one point in time, want a J-O-B. So we work really hard at CBCC, not only educating you, but letting you know of opportunities out there. So that, that will scroll through some different options that you may want to consider. So if you look down at the programs here in the sciences, again, there are three distinct pathways here. There's the general, a life sciences specialization, and then a physical sciences specialization. So I'll just look at the general one just for a second. And you'll notice that it's pretty heavy in the sciences area. Um, and so you would want to, again, walk through that linear pathway to look, uh, you know, course one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. Uh, and depending upon, you know, how fast you move through, whether you do it in two years or three years, um, you know, you have those options. And I will note that over here, uh, you'll notice the columns, the term offered. So almost every one of these courses, because this is the general studies degree, we offer pretty much, um, you know, the general studies and science degrees. These courses are offered on a regular basis, fall, spring, and summer. Uh, one other pathway that I will point out is the engineering pathway and the engineering pathway is we have two programs in the engineering. One is the Associate of Science. Many of our students transfer to Virginia Tech, uh, UVA, Old Dominion University. And again, that is uh, one of the other pathways here that we have. Uh, this is for students who are not faint of heart. I will just mention, mention because it does require, if you look at this program, it's pretty heavy in math. So if you're into math, this may be your program. And then one last program that I would like to mention is our education program. We have several partnerships with uh, local community, local uh, four-year schools for you to complete a four-year degree in education. So we have the education degree, which if you wanna go either into elementary education or secondary education, we do have an education degree that helps you sort of zero in on that pathway to prepare you to move into teaching, which, you know, having been a teacher most of my life, it is a great profession to go into and certainly a calling that, that many people respond to. So just, um, you know, that's a quick overview of the programs and classes that fall under my division. But regardless of whether you're going into general studies, the sciences, engineering, or education, this one page right here, programs and classes, can give you an opportunity to explore many of the programs, even the G3 that, that Ryan mentioned, other programs, uh, business, and, and our CTE program, our health sciences. Those are all great opportunities that are nested within this page here. So I hope uh, once the session is over, not right now, but once the session is over, I hope you'll uh, travel to centralvirginia.edu, click on program and classes and do all those other things. You haven't done that yet either, but click on programs and classes and explore the opportunities that we have at CVCC. 
And let me follow up and say, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the fall. So explore, but then we are on campus. And so I hope to see you this fall. And I'm gonna turn it back to Filmica, who I think is gonna ask you another question. We're just full of questions tonight, aren't we Filmica? Oh yeah, we are, but we're asking you these questions because we want to get to know you and we wanna make sure we have all the support that you guys need. So we do have another poll. Let's see. We got a good little distribution, it looks like so far. A whole lot of answering going on. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll and share the results. And up next, we actually, we, you guys will learn more about the programs we offer as well as the actual onboarding process. So what every, everything that you'll do after you actually apply to CVCC. So up next, we have Raylene Cope and she's gonna to talk to you guys more about our programs and the onboarding. Raylene? Hi everyone. Um, I hope everybody is having a wonderful summer evening. Um, I am Raylene Cope and I am a college navigator here at CVCC and I'm going to share my screen too. I'm going to try something a little different tonight that I thought would be pretty nice for you guys to kind of see. So um, I'm going to share my screen. Can you guys, let's see if it'll show me. Goodness. Yep, we see it. Can you see? I can see your screen Raylene. Yay. Can you see my CVCC screen or you're looking at? I can see your CVCC screen. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so this is our admissions um, page. Um, new students can come here. The first part that we do as college navigators is help students with the enrollment process. Um, we have a new student checklist that we try to go down and make sure that you have everything in place. So we do um, help students with ap the application process, which Marlena talked to you a little bit about that. Um, during the application process, um, you get to choose your program of study there. So I'll show that to you in just a little bit, um, some of the different programs we have. But um, throughout the process of the application, it can be sometimes a little tough. If you need help, you can reach out to us. Um, once you complete the application for admissions, at the end, it'll give you a password um, and a username. And you need to log into your MyCVCC account, which you can see up here at the top of the, of the screen. So you would click here and log into your MyCVCC and you'll see tons of buttons. Um, and we will help go over that a little bit as well. Once you've completed that part, um, your next piece would be to do our BCCS enrollment survey. So this tells us your college readiness. It gives you information or gives us information of where you are with English and mathematics. All of our programs, have heavy duty English and heavy duty mathematics. So we need to know where you are and, and what assistance you may need because we have different options to help each student out. Once you've completed that BCCS, BCCS enrollment survey, the other piece that we really like for students to do is to turn in their high school transcripts or if you're coming from another college or university to turn, turn in those transcripts as well. So we can help um, make sure that we're not making you take classes over again that you've already got credit for. And also just to help with placement, just in case um, a question gets skipped on your BCCS enrollment survey. So when you take this survey, please try not to skip any of the questions if you possible, possibly can. The next thing we do is make sure that you apply for financial aid. So Ryan went over the FAFSA instructions with you um, for financial aid, but we also double check to make sure that's in place so that all students have a way to pay for college. And if there's concerns or issues with your FAFSA, we will actually reach out to financial aid and try our best to connect you so that you have all those things in place as well. Now, once we've got those three pieces in place, we would then pass you on to one of our academic counselors. And your academic counselor would be um, in charge of making sure they go over the program of study that you chose. So we've got many, many, many different programs of study. If you click on our programs and classes button at the top of the screen, and then you can scroll down to the center of the page. Um, and then you can see this button here that says 
see all programs of study, we have lots that students can pick from. So there's many, many different things here. Um, whatever program you see that you're, you know, really interested in, um, and there are also buttons up here, um, like radio buttons that let you choose if you want like a transferable program or if you want, you know, just a one year certificate, um, various different options. So I'll click on one of them so you can see it. But what our counselors would do, they'll go over your program and talk about how many credits, how many classes are in the program, and they will help you line up your schedule for whatever term that you decide to start. So if you're starting in the fall, they'll try to make sure that, you know, you've got the amount of classes that you need and that you're enrolled in all the classes that are the most important for you to take at the time to keep you on track. Um, and then not only do they help with the enrollment piece, um, once you're in the classes, they keep up with you for the time that you're here at CVCC. So if you need additional assistance with something or if an instructor comes up and says, hey, you know, this student is having a, a, a problem in my class, they seem to be struggling on tests, our counselors will reach out to the students or to you guys directly and say, hey, let me see if there's something we can do. Do you need assistance? Are you having you know, problems with taking tests? Are you struggling? And we have free tutoring. So they'll do things to try to keep you on track to make sure you're successful. Um, our goal as navigators is to make sure you start strong. And our goal as counselors is to make sure that you finish strong. So we try to cover you from the very start all the way to the very end to make sure that you are, are doing the best possible job that you can do. And if your goal is to transfer at the end of your four-year or sorry your two-year program to a four-year college or university that's the next piece that we try to do to make sure that you have everything in place there so what I will do next is actually um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen is I'm going to share my information in the chat um, if you guys have any questions you can reach out to me directly but there are um, three navigators that are there to help us. And we, have a, we do have a um, first year coordinator. Her name is Kimberly French, that is our supervisor. And she rolls up her sleeves and gets right in there with us to help. And then we also have four counselors that are here to help you know, take control and, and pick you up after we're complete with you. Um, but if you have any questions about any of these things that I've kind of talked about, you can feel free to reach out to me. And that's pretty much it, unless there are specific questions in the chat. I don't think there's anything. So I think it's time for me to pass it on to Michael Ferris. Michael? Well, hi, Raylene, and hi, everyone. I hope you're all, you all are doing well tonight. Um, I am taking the place tonight of our, our student life coordinator, uh, Miss Deanne McDaniels. And so I'm going to try to fill in and do as good a job as I can talking about all of the things that go on outside of the classroom uh, here on campus. You know, there's, there's all the wonderful academic and learning support services that these folks have gone over. And then there's the piece that is sometimes kind of considered the, the fun part, right? The, the learning that happens outside of the classroom. And we're very much interested in supporting that for all of our students as well. You know, of course, things have changed a lot in the in the COVID landscape that have made, uh, well, you know, made campus life a thing that's been a little bit more difficult over the last year. But we are, as we return to campus uh, in a very measured way, making sure our students' health and safety is still, uh, you know, top priority. We are going to be doing some things here on campus this fall, uh, so I'll run over a few things that uh, that is important to be on the lookout for. Things like club sports and organizations. We're 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 going to be lifting those back up again. We're still following all the you know the health and safety guidance, and some of that's changing. So we're trying to keep up with all that, but we want to start doing that stuff again. Definitely the student clubs and organizations. Um, I, and I'd say it's real important to be on the lookout for, for an email from uh, our student life coordinator uh, pretty soon, uh, if you hadn't already gotten one. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. 
again, the, the organizations and the clubs are going to be lifting back up in the fall. There's also something that in the last year has been created called the Virtual Student Center. And that's really cool. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, that's accessible 24 seven through your My CVCC Canvas account. Um, so, you know, once you get enrolled and, and you're kind of looking around all the virtual spaces, that's definitely one space to keep up with. We, we will be doing uh, our Student Government Association again uh, this year. That's something else to, to be on the lookout for. Student ambassadors are awesome. And I think you actually get paid to do that. Don't you, Ray, you, our student ambassador? Yeah, you, you get paid to be an ambassador and, and spread good cheer and goodwill for CVCC. Uh, what's something else? We, we've got our student ambassadors, our club sports, the virtual student center. Um, you know what, that's about it. And, and again, there's always something going on on campus uh, for those of you that are interested in, in coming to campus and, and getting dialed in that way. Um, I'm going to put up in the, in the chat the direct contact information for our student life coordinator. But, you know, this will be our first fall since 2019 of trying to lift stuff up. So, again, we look forward to having you back on campus. And, and, and engaging with one another with, uh, with some activities. So that's about all I've got. Again, I'm gonna put up in the, in the chat the, uh, the contact information for a coordinator of student life. But if anybody has any questions about that stuff, and I'll say too, since you know a lot of what folks are talking about has to do with, with engaging with the campus, um, I'll, I'll take a minute. Um, we are working very, very hard to have students back on campus. Um, we are a school that loves face-to-face, -face, the high fives and the hugs with our students. And we are very much looking forward to being able to do that again. It still will look a little different than it has in the past, but uh, we are open. I think folks have mentioned the fact that our offices are open now. And, um, you know, we'll still do everything virtually. If that's your choice, you can still make appointments with your, your advisors and, and everybody virtually, but um, you can come on up to campus and interact with us that way too. And we're excited. The whole world, like Ryan said, the world changed a little while back and we're still getting used to, to being back together with people again. But uh, at the same time, we're we're real excited for that prospect of of seeing seeing folks and high fiving and hugging. So I won't take up any more time. Filmika, I'm going to send it back to you because I think you have another another thing to do with students, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, take care, everyone. All right. Thank you, Raylene, and thank you, Michael. Um, yes. Yeah, so we have one more poll for the afternoon, and I am going to launch that. All right, let me just take a minute to answer this. It's just one more person that has not answered. Let's see. All right. So it seems like most of you guys um, did get your answers quite um, the questions you had answered. Um, during this time, would anyone like to ask any questions? Feel free, any questions at all, if you have any further questions about financial aid or maybe a specific program you want to know more about or more about the onboarding process or admissions process. 
Yeah, feel free to unmute yourself and ask away. I just noticed that no and that everything wasn't answered for everybody. So if you, yeah, if you did not get your question answered, please speak up so we can help you. And, you know, there's no dumb questions. So just please ask, ask away. Absolutely. And if you're not comfortable speaking up, feel free to type it in the chat. Um, and I can just read it aloud generally. I won't even read your name if you're more comfortable with that. No? Anyone? All right. Um, well, if you have a specific question and perhaps you would like to email one of us, feel free to shoot us an email. Feel free to give us a call. Um, as Michael indicated, we are currently back on campus and we are looking forward to hopefully seeing you guys in the fall and, and, and meeting with you and getting to know you more. Um, and I just can't stress enough, if you have any question at all, it's no question too big, no question too small. Uh, we just want to make sure you have the information that you need to, to help us. We have a lot of exciting things going on right now at CBCC and we want to make sure you guys have all the info you need. So um, if you haven't already, check the chat. Um, everyone that spoke tonight has put their contact information in the chat, and that includes their phone number and email. So if there is someone on the call that talked tonight and you would like to talk to them a little bit more about their area of specialty, feel free to reach out to them. Okay. Uh, one more time, anyone else have any questions at all? I just want to make sure before we, before we log off. Okay, someone asked, um, who should they reach out to for help in regards to nursing prerequisite classes? So if you have questions about um, the prerequisite pieces, you would still just reach out to your college navigator um, or you can call our, um, our enroll, like our enrollment center phone number, which is the 434-832-7800. Um, so you can reach out to us there, um, or you can reach out to me. My contact is there. We can talk about it a little bit. If you've already enrolled in classes and um, you've been taking classes with us before, then you need to reach out to your counselor. And you can find your counselor by logging in to um, the MyCVCC and clicking on um, Navigate and um, make appointment, and it'll show you which person is your actual counselor. So um, if you have questions about that, that you could do that too, or you can call our front desk, like I said, and we'll, we'll get you in the right direction. Yep. And then, all right, great. Uh, any other questions? Anything? Going once, going twice? Feel free to type, you can type it in the, in the box. And like I said, I'll, I can just read it generally. I won't identify who it is if you're uncomfortable asking questions. No? All right. Well, thank you guys for taking time out of, out of your day to join us this evening. We hope that you did learn more about CBCC and our programs here. And we hope hopefully you do have the contact information for if there is something you want to talk to someone about one-on-one. Um, -on -one. We hope you did get that contact information. Um, but otherwise, I hope you guys have a great evening. And hopefully we'll see you guys at CBCC soon. So thank you. Bye, everybody. Take care, everyone. Have All a right. good night. Take care, everyone. Take care.